Today's video is all about sequences in Premiere Pro, how to create new sequences and what are the best settings to use no matter what type of video you're gonna be creating. There's basically two ways to set up your sequences in Premiere Pro. You can either allow Premiere Pro to match the exact settings of the footage that's already been shot for your project, or you can set up your own custom sequence settings that will be exactly what settings you want your final video to look like. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through both of those methods and help you figure out which one is gonna make the most sense for your project, and we'll narrow down exactly what settings will be best no matter what type of footage you're trying to edit. We want to reframe sequence settings because sequence settings, they do matter, but they only matter in so much as they are going to determine our output settings. So really what you need to know ahead of time is what settings do you want your exported video to be? And once you know what those settings should be, you're just going to simply match your sequence settings to match those output settings that you'd like for your exported video. The easiest way to handle your sequence settings in Premiere Pro is to simply let Premiere Pro match the settings of the footage that you're using to edit your video. And you can use this method if you know that your output video, if you are okay with those settings being the same settings that your footage was shot in. In most cases, this is fine. If you know that your camera is shot in 4K and you wanna to export to 4K video and you're not changing the frame rates or anything else, then um, this will be the most basic and straight forward method to use. First, let's walk through how easy it is to let Premiere Pro match the settings of your footage for your sequence. Here we are in Premiere Pro and let me just show you how easy it is to create your sequence with matching settings to the footage that you are going to be editing with. So all you need to do is grab any clip that you shot for your project and drag it over here into the empty timeline and that's going to automatically create a new sequence with settings that match the clip that you dragged in and you can see over here a new sequence has been created it's named the same as the clip that we dragged in and you can see that it's a sequence because of the little green color box over here and the different icon right here so what we want to do to stay organized is make sure that we rename this sequence and you can name it however you like and then we're gonna drag it out of this footage folder and we're gonna create a new folder. And we're gonna call that sequences. And now any sequences that we create in our project, we're just going to put them in that folder right there so we stay nice and organized. So if we look up here in our program window, you can see that this clip that we dragged into the sequence, because these settings match perfectly, um, the resolution, the dimensions, the height and the width, the size of our footage is perfect. There's not gonna be any black lines. Um, there's no cropping on our video. And when we play it back, it's gonna be smooth because the frames per second of our sequence are going to match the frames per second that this footage was shot in. If you decide that you want to change any of the sequence settings, you can easily do that. All you need to do is go up here to where your sequence is and right click on the sequence and click on sequence settings and that's gonna open up this window that allows you to change any of these parameters that you want. So you can change your frames per second, you can change your frame size. Um, the rest of this stuff I would leave as is and then you can just hit OK and you're all set. So now our settings for our sequence are perfect. They perfectly match our footage and we are ready to start editing. So what happens if you drag a clip in like this one that is different than the original footage that you created your sequence with? You're going to get this little dialog box that pops up and it's going to say clip mismatch warning. Basically, this is just saying that this clip does not have the same settings as the other piece of footage that we created our sequence with. So do you want to keep the same settings that you had before or do you want to change them to match this new clip? And that's something that you'll have to decide if you want your sequence settings to match this new clip then you're going to hit change sequence settings and now our sequence settings are going to match this new clip that we dragged in but if you wanted to keep your sequence settings the same um, and unchange then you would click that other option there i have another video that i made that's all about scale and set to frame size that you might want to check out it goes into more detail about what to do if you have two pieces of footage that are two different sizes that you want to use in the same sequence so i'll leave you a quick link for that if you want to check that out but for today's video we're just going to talk about how easy it is to change the sequence settings to match your clip settings now we're going to move on to method two which will just get into more specific settings that are the best to use for common types 
types of video like 4K and HD. So if you want to have full control over your sequence settings, let's talk about this sequence settings menu and what the best options are for some common types of video. So first let's look at creating 4K edits. So what we're going to do is create a new sequence. The easiest way to do this is by using the keyboard shortcut. It's command N on an Apple or control N if you're using a PC and that's going to open up this new sequence window. And what I like to use for my 4K videos is right here, ProRes RAW. So you're going to open up that folder, open up the 4K folder, and here you'll choose, depending on what your footage, what frames per second you shot in, um, you can choose which matches your footage. In most cases, almost every case, I use this 23.976. To me, that's the most cinematic and most authentic feeling for real-time footage. So go ahead and click on that one and then you're going to go over here and click on settings and you'll see that it's given us a lot of presets here for all these different options and what we want to do is go up here first to editing mode and just change this to custom and that's going to allow you to change anything within this window so i want to keep my time base the same that's my frames per second i'm going to keep the frame size the same as well here's our dimensions um, and if you had a little bit different dimensions here for example if you shot in uhd which has slightly different dimensions, this is where you could change those numbers. We're going to leave this as square pixels, we're going to leave this, and we're going to leave our display format as well. We're also going to keep the audio the same unless you know that your audio is recorded at a different sample rate. This is the most common one, so more than likely you'll just leave that as is. I also keep my preview file format as is, as you see here. You don't need to worry about the width and the height here, this is just for playback. Same here, you can leave these unchecked. Um, depending on how specific you're getting with your edits and how fast the processor of your computer is, you may or may not want to leave these checked or unchecked. If you check them, it's going to give you more color and more depth in your playback. So if you're doing really specific graphics and you want to see all those details as you edit, then you might want to click these boxes here. For me, I'm not that concerned about it at this point, and checking these boxes, it might cause some lag as you play back. So your render is going to be slower and it's going to be a little bit more time consuming to edit. So I like to leave these unchecked. And I also leave this as iframe only. Another common thing that a lot of people use is QuickTime right here, and this just depends on what type of files you're editing with. If you know you're editing ProRes files from your footage, then um, QuickTime would be a good option. And then you would want to use the codec ProRes 422LT. So either of those options is fine for video previews. And then let's go ahead and save this preset. First, I'm gonna name the sequence. Again, you can name this however you like. I'm gonna call mine cut two. And then I'm gonna save this preset and then I'm gonna call it Beth 4K settings. And then I'm gonna hit okay. And then over here in our sequence presets, you're gonna see in just a second, there we go, there's our custom preset right there. So every time that I'm using this footage, I can just click on over here to these settings and I'll know that they are correct. Let's do one more with um, what we might want to use for HD video. So it doesn't really matter on the screen. You really can choose any of these options. Um, what matters is over here in settings. So again, we wanna make sure this is set as custom. You can change your time base if you shot in slow motion or something else here. And then frame size is what we would pay attention to for HD. We would want to change this to 1920 by 1080. And then everything else we're going to leave the same. Um, this I can go back to iframe only if I like. Leave these unchecked. And now I'm going to call this sequence cut 3. And I'm going to save this preset as well. And there we go, now I have my two custom presets. I might wanna add one more that's UHD, so I'll go over here to settings and I'm gonna make this frame size 3840. Everything else I'm gonna leave the same. I'm gonna save this preset as, and I'm gonna hit okay. And now you can see that all these settings have been saved and if I hit okay, it's gonna go ahead and create a sequence with those settings. 
So there we go. That was the one that we named cut three and it's down here. I can drag it up into my sequence folder and I have a sequence ready to go with those settings that I set for it. If at any point in time you want to change those sequence settings, just right click on your setting, go up to sequence settings and you can tweak any of these parameters that we had. All right, guys, that is how I use sequence settings in Premiere Pro. I hope this video has helped you. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.